thought that I was the, the, the one that was really passionate about issues, about social issues, um, that I would be the one that would be, let's say, working behind the scenes on developing policy and pushing, you know, important people, like pushing the media to focus their attention on something. Um, you know, working for a nonprofit or eventually heading up a nonprofit and lobbying somebody for something to happen. You know, I always thought that that would be my role. You know, the more I, the more I do, the more I realize that. Um, gee, I spent a lot of time trying to convince other people that my ideas are good, or doing research to, to show that I'm legitimate, so that I can convince somebody else to do something that I think they should be doing. Um, and at some point, it, it switched. Um, in me that, okay, so I'm doing all of that, but what am I actually doing? So, right. you know, if I'm, gonna, if I'm so passionate about it, if I'm trying to get people there, um, then why not look in the mirror and say that I think I'm maybe one of those people. So there's an opportunity at the local level to sort of transcend what one's particular politics are and to, to really demonstrate um, a, um, an effective leadership that people would want and would vote for. Um, so I think that that's been the most um, uh, effective way that, that myself as a woman has been able to get elected in, in Pittsburgh is um, not because I'm a woman, um, but really because I've had the experience. We've always been a um, we've been a, we've been a city that has embraced immigration. Um, we've seen um, uh, refugees come in um, from other countries, and uh, we want to make sure that again that everybody has access to very basic things. You know, a place to live, um, access to the land, access to food, um, access to you know jobs and work if they want it. Um, but that you know this is a place that they can come. And I think by doing so, um, that will help me achieve my goals of um, being a place that's going to grow and be sustainable. Because I think the most sustainable thing that we can do is not an infusion of, let's say, government subsidies or um, these big businesses providing jobs, but a community where people can access the basic things that they need in life, and therefore um, that, I think, is very sustainable. We are here. You know, we're here. We care about this place. Um, and just by doing that, that has made a huge difference uh, in terms of the, um, you know, the, the crime that's going on in that neighborhood and the sense of safety that people have. So um, there's always um, there's always more that can be done, but we've been able to do more than just have a police substation. So there is um, community meetings. There's now a place for community meetings. There's a um, place for youth programs. And then we, it's also um, it's sort of an invitation for people to figure out what they can bring to the table. So we've had people say, you know what, we should start a Girl Scout troop here. Um, and that's an example of, of the types of, of small steps that need to happen. Um, so we need to provide that base level um, for folks. So just like, um, you know, in other countries, you know, you want people to be safe, you want there to be free and democratic elections, you want there to be access to free public education, you want you know, there to be food on the table, you want there to be access to basic health care, you know, the same large principles apply here. And there are pockets um, where that doesn't exist, where people don't feel safe, which the state provides funding for um, parks in urban communities like this with urban rivers and helps us um, create these, these bridges between the river, and the city, and, and other assets. Um, we want more parks. Uh, we want more um, forests, we want more agricultural areas, but we also want Wi-Fi. So if people are gardening <laughs> somewhere and they can take public transportation or they can ride their bike there, you know, we want them to take out their, iPod, their iPad 2s and look up something that they need to or video something that they're doing and be able to share and teach that with the rest of the community. So, um, I think that's really, you know, I, I just kind of like the integration of both. Um, and then also trying to figure out if these models can be um, duplicated um, in other communities, if they can be um, duplicated in other states, um, and you know, we're, we just want to be sort of innovative. Um, that I came in with such conviction and with um, uh, proven, you know, product. Because if I said, you know, I care about the environment, I'm not just some person who's like, oh, I love the environment and I belong to all these groups and I have all these stickers on my 
on my Prius, and you know, it's, <laughs> it's not like that. But but I'm like, here's 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 the new laws that I've been able to put in place. Here are the partnerships that I have of people who are politically experienced. Here are the projects I've been able to get done in the city. Um, here are the things I've been able to um, change. Here are the people that I've been able to integrate into the plan. Um, and that just became sort of one piece of many. Imagine if there's no group of people talking together to figure out how to do more, how to educate people more, how to get more people involved. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest um, challenge that we face is having the right passionate and sustainable vehicle in order to get things done and not necessarily getting things done. I want um, the younger generations to understand um, and to see politics as um, something where they can get something done and to understand how to actually get things done. Solar panel installation, um, I want to tell you about an interesting uh, sort of nuance that um, most people don't think of when they think of, oh, solar panels, great, alternative energy, let's get off the coal. Okay, well, let's talk about the political reality of what actually things look like on the ground. So Massachusetts has a very strong union climate. Um, I, I agree with 95% of it. I think it's really great. 5% um, of it, I sort of scratch my head at and think, okay, what is this resulting in? So we have a very strong um, electrical uh, well, all the unions are strong, but the, the electricians' union has been able to pass a law that all solar panel installation has to be done by a licensed electrician. Okay. To be a licensed electrician, you have to go through all these, you know, hoops, you have to get certification. Okay, so that sounds good, right? Because you want things to be safe. Um, and I think that that, you know, Parts of this are, you know, should be integrated into into regulation so that people are kept safe. Um, but it is such that the law was written that the electrician pretty much has to do everything. So the electrician is um, pouring the concrete if there's something to be done. The electrician is um, moving something and installing something that doesn't necessarily require that that there be an electrical component or training to it. So what has happened is that this type of regulation in which the most um, efficient person isn't doing the particular task that needs to be done is that the overall cost of solar panel insulation has become so high such that the overall cost of a solar panel insulation is not justifying the savings that it produces. So you're like, okay, <laughs> if you think about it, it's it's so it's actually a law that requires that a certain person does a certain task involved with a certain installation of something that actually makes it um, not cost productive enough so that it's not being done.